grace, the prologue is addressed. Let him approach. our good will that you should think become not to offend but with good will to show our simple skill that is the true beginning of our end consider then we come but in despite we do not come as minding to contest you our true intent is all for your delight we are not here that you should hear refuse you. <laughs> uh, the actors are at hand, and by their show you shall know all that you are like to know. This fellow does not stand upon points. He hath read his prologue. Like a rough coat, he knows not the stops. A good moral, my lord, for it is not enough to speak, but to speak truth. Indeed, he had played on his prologue like a child on a recorder. <laughs> a sound, but not in government. <laughs> and his speech was like a tangled chain, nothing impaired, but all disordered. <laughs> Who's next? <clears throat> Gentles, perchance you wonder at this show, but wonder on, till truth make all things plain. This man, if you would know, is Pyramus. This beauteous lady, this be, is certain. This man, with lime and rough cast, doth present wall. <laughs> that vile wall which did these lovers sunder, and through walls chink, poor souls they are content to whisper. This man, with lantern and bush of thorn doth present moonshine. <laughs> For if you would know, by moonshine did these lovers think no scorn to meet at Ninus too. There, there to woo. <laughs> now this grisly beast, which lion hide by name, the trusty Thisbe, coming first by night, did scare away, or rather did affright. And as she fled, her mantle she did fall, and lion, vile with bloody mouth, did stain. Anon comes Pyramus, sweet youth and tall, and finds trusty Thisbe's mantle slain, whereat, with blade, with a bloody, blameful blade, he bravely broached his boiling breast. And Thisbe, tearing in mulberry shade, his dagger drew. And died. <laughs> For all the rest, <laughs> let lie in moonshine wall and lovers twain at large discourse while here they do remain. I wonder if lion be to speak. Well, no wonder, my lord. One lion may when many ass his too. <laughs> in this same interlude it doth befall that I, one snout by name, present. A wall, and such a wall as I would have you think, did have in it a crannied hole or chink through which the lovers Pyramus and Thisbe did often whisper very secretly. This loam, this rough cast, and this stone doth show that I am that same wall. The truth is so. And this the cranny is right and sinister through which the fearful lovers are to whisper. Would you desire lime and hair to speak better? The wittiest partition that e'er I heard discourse, my lord. No silence, uh, Pyramus approaches the wall. Pyramus. Oh, grim looking night. Oh, night with you so black. O oh, night, whichever art when day is not. O oh, night, alack, alack, alack. <laughs> I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot. And thou, O oh, wall, O oh, sweet, O oh, lovely wall, that standest between her father's ground and mine, thou wall, O oh, sweet, O oh, lovely wall, Show me thine cheek to blink through with mine eye. <laughs> Thanks, courteous wall. Joe, shield you over this. <laughs> 
<laughs> but what see I? No, this be do I see. Oh, wicked wall through whom I see no bliss. Cursed be thy stone for thus deceiving me. The wall, methinks, being sensible, should curse again. <laughs> No, in truth, sir, he should not. Deceiving me is Thisbe's cue. She is to enter now, and I am to spy her through the wall. You shall see it will fall back as I told you. Yonder she comes. <laughs> oh, wall! How often hast I heard thine moans for party, my fair Pyramus and me? Oh, my charity lips! Have often kissed thy stones, thy stones, up in thee. I see a voice, and now will I despise, and I can hear my Thisbe's face. <laughs> Thisbe! <laughs> my love, thou art my love, I think. Think what thou wilt, I am thy lover's grace. Oh. And like a limander am I trusty steel. Oh, and like hell until the face make hell. Not Shaffalus to Procris was so true. Oh, from Shaffalus to Procris, I to yet. Oh, kiss me through the hole of this vile wall. Oh, <laughs> I kiss the whole hole, not your lips at all. Wilt thou at minus two meet me straightway? Oh, tied life, tied death, I come without delay. <laughs> thus have I wall my heart discharged so, and being done, thus wall away doth go. <laughs> And no remedy, my lord, but walls are so willful to hear without warning. This is the silliest stuff I have ever heard. <laughs> the best in this kind are but shadows, and the worst are no worse if imagination of men. Then it must be your imagination and not theirs. If we imagine no worse of them than they of themselves, they may pass for excellent men. But here come two noble beasts in a man and a lion. for his discretion. Uh, uh, not so, my lord, for his valor cannot carry his discretion as the fox carries the goose. His discretion, I am sure, cannot carry his valor, for the goose carries not the fox, but it is well. Leave it to his discretion and let us hearken to the moon. This then doth the horn moon present. Should have worn the horns upon his head. <laughs> he, is no, he is no crescent and his horns are invisible within the circumference. Myself the man doth the horn moon seem to be. <laughs> this is the greatest error of all the rest. The man should be put into the lantern. How is it else the man in the moon? He dares not go there for the candle, for you see it is already in snuff. I am weary of this moon. What he would change? Well, it appears by his small light of discretion that he is in the way. But yet, <laughs> in courtesy and all reason, we must stay the time. Proceed, moon. All I have to say is to you. That this myself the man be, this lantern of the moon seem to be, this storm bush is my thorn bush. Boy, all these things should be in the lantern, for they are in the moon. <laughs> but soft, here comes this bee. This is Minnie's tomb. Oh, where is my love? Where is my love? <laughs> Well shone, Moon. Surely the moon shines with a good grace. Well bowed, Lion. <laughs> and then came Pyramus. And so the lion vanished. 
sweet moon, I thank thee for thy sunny beams. I thank thee, moon, for shining now so bright. For by thy gracious golden glittering gleams, I trust to take of truest this beside thee. But stay, oh spite! But mark, poor knight, what dreadful dole is here. Eyes, do you see? How can it be? Thy, thy mantle good. What? Stained with blood? Approach ye furies, fell. Out fate, come, come. Cut, thread, and thrum. Quail, thrust, conclude, and quail. This passion and the death of a dear friend would go near to make a man look sad. Be sure, my heart, but I pity the man. Oh, wherefore, nature, didst thou lions frame? Since lion here hath deflowered, my dear, which is... No, no, which was the fairest dame that lived that loved, that liked, and that looked with cheer. Come, tears, come, foul. Out now. <laughs> Out now, the sword of Pyramus, and wound thy back. Aye, that left. That left path, <laughs> where heart doth heart go, <laughs> thus die I, thus, 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 love. <laughs> Now die! 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 <laughs> die. <laughs> 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 Less than an ace man, for he is dead, he is nothing. <laughs> With the help of a surgeon, he may yet recover and prove an ass. <laughs> no chance moonshine has gone before. This becomes back to find her lover. She will find him by starlight, and her passion ends the play. Me think she should not use a long one for such as Pyramus. I hope she will be brief. The moth will turn the balance, which did Pyramus, which this be is the better. She hath spied him already with those sweet eyes. And thus she moans, Videlicet. Ah, let's leave my love. Why, dead my dove? Oh, Pyramus, her eyes! Big <laughs> thing, my dove. Dead. Dead? Oh, a tube must cover thy sweet eyes. These lily lips. <laughs> this cherry nose. <laughs> These yellow cow slip cheeks. Are gone. <laughs>
No. The wall that parted their fathers is down. Will it please you to hear our epilogue, or to see a burgomaster as between the two of our company? No epilogue, I pray you. For your play needs no epilogue. Never excuse. And when the players are all dead, there need none to be excused. Let your epilogue alone, very notably discharged. And the other time I pay by the 12 12. Lovers, to bed, tis almost fairy time. I fear we shall outsleep the coming morn, as much as we this night have overwatched. This palpable gross play hath well beguiled the heavy gate of night. But come, to bed, a fortnight hold we this solemnity in nightly revels and new jollity. <laughs>